Hello, welcome to Sonograph Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about pandemic endemic diseases. This is the first video in this video series with title of Radiology Manifestation in Dengue Fever. The outline of this presentation include introduction, prevalence, symptoms and signs, imaging methods, imaging findings related to dengue fever, including ascites, pleural effusion, gallbladder wall thickening, hepato and splenomegaly, altered liver echo texture, precardial effusion, nephropathy, neurological findings, and findings in pregnant patients. The correlation between platelet count and imaging findings can radiology play a role in early diagnosis? Can we use ultrasound as a screening tool? And final teaching points. At first, introduction. The dengue fever is a mosquito-borne infectious disease that is caused by the bite of a species Aedes aegyptus or Aedes albopictus. It's the second most common mosquito-borne disease. Dengue virus is a small single-strand RNA virus compromising four distinct serotypes. These closely related serotypes of the dengue virus belong to the genus Flavivirus. Dengue fever is a self-limiting global and mostly endemic disease with a wide range of clinical symptoms affecting hepatobiliary, cutaneous, neurological and renal systems. Virus laboratory and imaging modalities like chest X-ray, ultrasound and MRI play a significant role in the assessment of the severity of the disease. Prevalence The disease is now endemic in tropical and subtropical countries due to different climate with high prevalence in both underdeveloped and developed countries. According to the World Health Organization, the estimated prevalence of dengue fever is 50 million worldwide, with the majority of cases reported in Asia. Symptoms and signs Dengue infection is caused by any of four different serotypes of the virus. It's transmitted by the bite of idiots mosquitoes, which are primarily found in the tropics where the mosquitoes flourish in stagnant water. Infection with one serotype primary infection doesn't provide long-life immunity from infection through other serotypes. Other serotypes can subsequently infect the same person and cause secondary infection. After an incubation period of 2 to 8 days after an infective mosquito bite, the disease usually begins with sudden onset of fever and headache, famous as febrile phase. The self-limiting illness of dengue fever usually presents clinically with symptoms of fever, muscle pain, headache, and body rush. This is followed by the critical phase in which capillary permeability increases, leading to hemoconstriction with associated thrombocytopenia. Significant plasma leak can occur during this phase with associated multi-organ dysfunction. Most patients gradually improve during the recovery phase in which extravascular fluid is reabsorbed with improvement in platelet count. Clinical presentation of dengue virus infection ranges from mild dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, to severe dengue shock syndrome. Imaging methods The most frequently used imaging methods in dengue are chest radiography and abdominal ultrasound, especially in emergency rooms. The initial evaluation of a patient with dengue is with chest X-ray and according to the clinical picture and its evolution, other diagnostic methods are requested. Dengue consists of a significant increase in vascular permeability with loss of plasma and albumin from the intravascular space causing polycerositis. The main cane modality for determining the severity of dengue is ultrasound of the abdomen. 
It allows to assess with a high degree of certainty the abdominal findings related to dengue fever, which are thickening of the gallbladder wall, ascites, hepato and splenomegaly, precordial effusion, and pleural effusion. Imaging findings related to dengue fever. At first, ascites. Ascites develops with the pathophysiological process of polycerositis correlating with the severity of the disease. Ascites is detected on physical examination when it exceeds 1000 cc in volume, while ultrasound can demonstrate the existence of scant amounts of peritoneal fluid approximately 100 cc. Its appearance is usually unechoic and may be of variable quantity. Ascites seems to be the most frequent finding in dengue patients and may be considered as early phase of leakage process from capillaries. This is very critical time in management of disease and this phase of disease can be detected in its very earliest stage through ultrasonography. Prual effusion as in ascites, pleural effusion is part of the process of polycerositis, resulting in plasma leakage into the pleural cavity. According to some studies, it's generally an infrequent finding being right or bilateral, an isolated left-sided pleural effusion being exceedingly rare. Pleural effusion in dengue is one of the markers of severity, but it's mild and self-limiting without the need for intervention. The type of rural effusion is exudative. According to some studies, there is a positive correlation between the amount of rural effusion and severity of the disease. In chest radiography, pleural effusion is the most frequent finding, which can be unilateral or bilateral of variable quantity and mainly on the right side. In cases of severe dengue, it may demonstrate the presence of vascular congestion or lead to acute respiratory distress syndrome. This chest radiograph showing consolidation on left upper and lower lobes and also right upper lobe. But of course, chest CT is the better modality for detection of pulmonary exudative lesions. Gall bladder wall thickening. Gall bladder wall thickening is one of the most frequent findings, but it's non specific since it's found in other viral infections, cholecystitis, liver cirrhosis, and portal hypertension. There are different forms of gall bladder wall thickening that can be observed in ultrasound. These can be lamellar or layered, diffuse, and reticular thickening. Of these forms of thickening, the diffuse thickening is the most frequent form. Lamellar or reticular thickening are observed more frequently in children or young adults. Reticular thickening is more frequent in patients with severe dengue. This type of thickening is usually located at the bottom of the gall bladder. According to some studies, gallbladder wall thickening of more than 5 mm could be adapted as a criterion for identifying dengue hemorrhagic fever patients at high risk for developing hypovolemic shock or dengue shock syndrome with a specificity of 92%. Hepato and splenomegaly. Both hepato and splenomegaly is homogeneous without focal lesions. In some cases, the liver may present steatosis or fatty liver. Liver growth may be present in up to 30% and splenomegaly in 14% of cases. Altered liver echo texture. As explained, hepato and splenomegaly show homogeneous echo texture, but there are some reports of altered liver echo texture. Changes in liver were recorded as hypoechoic liver with permanent portal terriots. The typical appearance is also called starry sky appearance that has been demonstrated in different infectious hepatitis or can be seen in viral etiologies affecting the liver but with its specification with dengue fever has not been given previously. 
However, altered liver ecotexture has not been a consistent ultrasound finding of dengue fever as it has not been found in all the studies. Precardial effusion Precardial effusion may occur in severe cases after the fifth or seventh day of illness in up to 28% of cases. Its sonographic characteristic is a simple unechoic effusion. Nephropathy Nephropathy is the known complication of dengue fever and various studies on dengue-induced nephropathy have been reported. As we can see in this image, increased parenchymal echogenicity of the kidney suggests the nephropathy. This finding emphasized that the fact that baseline and regular follow-up evaluation of renal function should be done in patients with dengue fever. Neurological findings. Although dengue virus causes multi-system disease, which can lead to multi-organ dysfunction, it rarely has neurologic manifestation. Neurological involvement is of concern because of long-term sequelae that can be seen in such cases. Some studies report a few cases of encephalitis, famous as dengue encephalitis, encephalopathy, and intracranial hemorrhage. Findings in pregnant patients There are a few case studies of dengue fever in pregnancy which report a few findings, include oligohydraminous, intrauterine growth restriction, intrauterine fetal deaths. Oligohydraminous, which could be attributed to loss of fluid due to capillary leakage. Is there any correlation between platelet count and imaging findings? Several hematological parameters have been considered as potential predictors, most commonly the platelet count. The severity of course of the disease, which is directly linked to the platelet count, can also be assessed by sonography. In patients whose platelet counts are less than 40,000, the most frequent findings are gallbladder wall thickening, ascites, and pleural effusion. With platelet counts between 40 and 80,000, the most frequent findings are gallbladder wall thickening and pleural effusion. And with platelet counts greater than 80,000, pleural effusion is more frequent, followed by gallbladder wall thickening. None of these matters are definite, but what is clear is that dengue fever patients have a significantly negative correlation with platelet count. Can radiology play a role in early diagnosis? The major diagnostic methods available presently are viral culture, viral nucleic acid detection by recombinant PCR, and serological tests such as IgM capture LISA. After the onset of illness, the virus can be detected in serum, plasma, and circulating blood cells and other tissues for four to five days. During the early stages of the disease virus isolation, nucleic acid or antigen detection can be used to diagnose the infection that gives a definitive diagnosis of dengue. At the end of the acute phase of infection, serology is the method of choice for the diagnosis. Hemoagglutination inhibition antibodies usually appears at detectable level by day 4 to 6 days of febrile illness, resulting in delayed diagnosis of dengue fever is often delayed opening to time taken for availability of results. By that time, abnormal ultrasound findings also start to appear, and so the timing of doing an ultrasound in dengue is more crucial as it's better correlated with serological findings. Thus, ultrasound can be used as a diagnostic tool in some of the more severe cases when laboratory reports are not available or awaited. Hence, ultrasound being a cost-effective, less time-consuming, and easily available modality can easily be used to diagnose dengue fever during an epidemic and can help to start treatment before the antigen assays are available. Another important question. Can we use ultrasound as a screening tool? 
before to answer to this question, it's better to review two teaching cases together. A 20-year-old male presented with a history of fever, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain for three days. Ultrasound shows normal side liver and spleen and normal bladder wall thickness. On day three, the patient was sonographically negative for dengue fever, but serology was positive for dengue fever. Another case, a 23-year-old female patient presented with a history of fever for three days, myalgia, body ache, nausea, and vomiting. Ultrasound shows mild hepatosplenomegaly, gallbladder wall thickening of 6.2 mm with mild periclecistic edema, mild bilateral pleural effusion, and mild ascites. On day 3 of the fever, the patient was positive for dengue fever on ultrasound, but on serology turned out to be negative. As the sensitivity and negative predictive value of ultrasound are low, ultrasound should not be used as a screening tool and negative ultrasound cannot rule out dengue fever. In view of the high specificity and positive predictive value, ultrasound may be used for early diagnosis of dengue fever if serological diagnostic modalities such as the NS1 antigen test are not available or awaited. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. The early phase of leakage process from capillaries is very critical time in management of dengue fever and this phase of disease can be detected in its very early stage through abdominal sonography by detection of a few amount of ascites. The ideal timing of conducting ultrasound in dengue fever is 3 to 5 days after the onset of the fever. All sick dengue patients should undergo serial ultrasound examinations for early diagnosis and to assess the severity and progression of the disease. Ultrasound can be used as a tool to determine severity of dengue fever in conjugation with other parameters when other serology reports are awaited. This will help in the early and timely identification and picking up of complications earlier in dengue patients, which will result in better patient outcome. Despite being uncommon, the presence of fluol effusion is a sign of the severity of dengue and there is a positive correlation between its amount and the severity of the disease. In general, ultrasound findings of hepatosplenomegaly, gallbladder wall edema, right-sided or bilateral pleural effusion, and ascites in a patient presenting with signs and symptoms of dengue fever during an epidemic are virtually diagnostic of dengue fever. However, as the sensitivity and negative predictive value of ultrasound are low, ultrasound should not be used as a screening tool and negative ultrasound cannot rule out dengue fever. In view of the high specificity and positive predictive value, ultrasound may be used for early diagnosis of dengue fever. If serological diagnostic modalities such as the NS1 antigen test are not available or awaited. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.